Hello everyone. For the course of intercultural communication, we had to complete a team assignment regarding an intercultural event. In this following presentation, we would like to tell you something more about what we did, what we discovered, and especially what we learned. In the course, we saw different terms and attitudes regarding intercultural communication. Otherization, identity, representation. We wanted to investigate whether one could avoid all these terms. Is it possible to grow up while being used to different nationalities and cultures? Does a perfect global citizen exist? And so, during our brainstorm session, next question was posed by one of the group members. Is learning to communicate at a young age, on an intercultural level, a good way to raise children? We all immediately thought this was a good central thesis for our team assignment. Because, if you get used to some things as a child, you keep those things with you for the rest of your life. Now that we had our central thesis, what next? We all had some very different ideas about how we were going to handle this assignment. Some of us wanted to interview Belgian children about their intercultural experiences. Others wanted to interview intercultural kids. Then our attention fell on one school in particular, the International School of Leuven. So we visited ISL on their open day. We prepared a set of questions so that we could interview some teachers and students. They were all very kind and cooperative. Let's get back to our central thesis. We'll tell you something more about the children attending the school, their age and other factors. We all have dreams, but without education, dreams will never come true. Learning to communicate at a young age is all about developing personal, emotional and social skills. The ISL supports those children in taking their first steps into the big world of education. ISL has 32 students from 20 different countries and half of them are from Asia. Most of the students are all from a different country. Now that we discussed some facts about the school itself, we would like to continue with the part concerning communication. How do children communicate? Do they already speak a language? Two-thirds of the children can speak two or more languages. Children from Asia and Europe have better language ability than those from America. In this case, the language skills can help children communicate much easier with others. In order to be a global citizen, we need to start learning communication at a young age. One of the main things children learn in primary school is how to communicate with other people. This was the case for this school as well. However, more difficulties arose than in a normal primary school, because communication was done on an intercultural level. As Michelle explained in one of our interviews, children do not know how to express themselves at such a young age, but they have to learn it. It is very important for their further growing up and their formation of view of values. The main thing that made it difficult was the fact that none of them spoke the same language. At ISL, they tried to teach them to speak English and Dutch. They tried to make the experience as fun as possible by using a lot of gestures when they spoke. This made it more vivid for the children as well to communicate in this sign language. Another problem was that these kids were confronted with so many different languages that they started to confuse them. They would start to speak three different languages in one sentence. Another consequence of this was that children didn't even know how to say thim simple things. For example, when they had to go to the toilet, they didn't know how to say it. This would sometimes result in little accidents. You probably all noticed that ISL is not your average elementary school. What's the difference with a normal school? Are there any difficulties? We are a multicultural team. Our team consists of three Belgian and two Chinese students. If we relate to our own primary school, of course it will be from two different views. First of all, we'll start with the difference between the Belgian primary school and international school. The kids go to school in an environment where they speak so many different languages. They probably don't even realize it, but this will give them benefits in their further school career. They already have a good language basis when they go to high school. When Belgian students are in fifth grade, they learn to speak French. The international students will already have a basis. It's easier for them to learn a language because they are so young. Once in a week, they get a lesson Dutch and English. When they come to school for the first time, the students probably won't feel home. Everybody's from another country, they don't speak the same language. Most of them won't even speak English. 
Communicating with other students will not go so smooth. For Belgian kids, they can talk to each other because they speak Dutch. If you can communicate to the fellow students or not, makes a lot of difference for feeling home. Another difference is, is that they have class until 12. Normal kids have class until 15. For the differences with the Chinese primary school, there is one big. They used to be in a class with 40 students. In a normal Belgian primary school, they are with 20. A difficulty that can create distance between the children is culture difference. They come from different places around the world. Some children do or say things that others can conceive as unfriendly. The difference between cultures can create awkward situations. For example, when someone tells a joke and the other doesn't think it's funny at all. Now that we had all previous items discussed, we can move on to the next. Raising children is a very important factor in modern-day families. In our changing multicultural society, children are more and more aware of their situation at a younger age. And it's getting more and more important for children as well, as parents, to realize that it's not the only responsibility for our children to be hard-working students or well-behaved kids. It is also their mission to con contribute something to the globalized world when they grow up. Speaking of the ability of being a global citizen, the children with experience in international school are really predominant conditions. First of all, the children in international primary school can have an easy access to the information about all kids, the countries and cultures around the world, which can cause influences on their worldview perception. They would know more about the world, care more and act more, which leads them to be a good global citizen. For his speaking skills, they take Dutch lessons every week, as it's mentioned, and all of them can speak several kinds of language, including the most commonly used one, English. In the process of raising children, you are likely willing to give anything, whatever it takes, to raise them for a brighter future. No matter how you want them to be in the future, leading them to understand the importance of a bright future is the key. It might surprise you that raising them for a brighter future isn't necessarily all about encourage, encouraging top study habits or something like that. Sometimes, the best thing you can do for your children's future is make sure they have a good character. Again, the children in international school are usually more open-minded, friendly, curious, respectful, all of which are good qualities that a global citizen possesses. It can be trained and obtained during children's growth. Children are the future. Next, we will shortly discuss the links we discovered during our visit with the course. We noticed there were a lot of drawings at the wall. Via these artworks, children are motivated to represent themselves and to form their personality. They form their own identity of who they are in today's world. Another advantage of the school was that the classes contained mixed groups of age as well as nationality. Because of the fact that these children are too young to form stereotypes, because of the mixed groups, we could say that the children certainly are on a good path to avoid otherization in their future lives. Some remarks concerning the teachers now. During the interview, one of the teachers mentioned that not a single child was the same. For example, there were two children from India but they were totally different in habits as well as in culture. Cultures are very difficult to generalize. Every, chil every child is different. So to end our story, we would like you to confirm some things. The answer we found to our central thesis is the fact that this is certainly a good thing to raise children in a multicultural environment. We also noticed that an international school really is something special. These children will have none or certainly less intercultural problems than we have now in their later lives. Perhaps an idea for other schools? We would like to end our presentation with some fragments of the interviews. We thank you for your attention. Uh, before noon from 3 to 4 and in the afternoons uh, the 5 and 6 year olds join us so that table is basically, basically this is for the older kids yes. now this is for the young kids so I don't know what uh, would you want to ask me? Just ask me is it uh, difficult to interact with all these different cultures? does it ever pose any problems like language wise and also? oh yeah, oh yeah well uh, first of all, with the little ones, none of them speak English and none of them uh, speak English at home either. So I have like nine students and nine different nationalities. Well, 
is actually well this one is for example a mother is from Switzerland and father is from Italy but he's American and uh, and but he doesn't speak any English so well he speaks French and Italian for example this one is from India this one is from Sweden this one is from um, Belgium but she speaks Dutch and French this one is from Japan, that's the most difficult one. Uh, this one is from India too, but they don't speak the same language, even though they're from, from India. This one is from China and Belgium. This one is from Sri Lanka, and this one is from South Korea. This is from, yeah, this is from the little ones. And from the older ones, I have... This one is American, this one is Italian American, uh, Chinese Belgium, and uh, Indian. But even though I have three students from India, none of them speak the same language. So that's the first challenge. Um, language wise, it's not that difficult because in their, in their stage, when you're three, you're in the stage of learning a language. So you either learn, learn your native language or another language. So they grasp everything very yeah, fast. Very fast. But when it comes to go to the toilet, that's when the problems come because they don't know how to say it in English. Um, so that I train them for that. Or when it comes to talk about their emotions, it's also very tough. Yes. So I have, uh, let's say, problems when it comes to emotions. But that's why I have that there. Mm -hmm. So we review it every every day. We talk about our feelings. We, we review all those feelings there. And so they can express or they can, they are able to tell me how they feel. So that's the first thing I do. And also I always uh, tell a story, like the same story for two weeks. And uh, that helps them learn phrases and sentences, and that way they can communicate. Like Aureliano started in January, then um, he only spoke, spoke um, French and Italian, and now he only speaks English, too, and he started in January. So I'm very proud of that. For example, Shunse also started in January, he understands everything I say. Alma started in January. Now, now I'm so happy with all of them because they all started like just a few months ago and they already started communicating with me in English so so that's that's the let's call it the, the good thing the positive aspect of teaching very very young kids because their native language is not that uh, that strong yet because they haven't learned to read they haven't learned to write and reading and writing is what makes your native language strong so that that, that, that that is kind of an advantage. And so with their parents, they need to speak yeah. English as well? or just No, no, no. With their parents, language? at home, they speak at their own they... language. <laughs> and with me, they speak English. So, yeah. So the main focus is on English? Or is it Dutch as well? Dutch, they get once a week on Thursdays. But because of, our, of their level, of their age, uh, I just focus on vocabulary and songs. And like basic things like loister, paso, cake. Yeah, small, small <laughs> that, they yeah, that they can understand. The colors in Dutch. Uh, there I have that uh, chart in Dutch. So there we have the days of the week, the months, the season. And then we have that song that we're learning. Um, so yeah, it's basically vocabulary and basic phrases. So yeah, and um, the problem, well, I don't know if you can call that problem, but for them it's still difficult to differentiate if they're speaking English or Dutch, if they're using English or Dutch, but I think that will come. Because for some of them it's even their fourth language. Like for, for, Aurelian, for Aureliano it's his fourth language, Dutch. For Elise it's all, oh no, for Elise it's um, her mother tongue. But uh, for Aureliano it's his fourth language, so, so it's kind of... <laughs> confusing for yes, yes, yes. him. <laughs> and do they, they understand each other or they, can they play well? They, 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 they understand they each other in English. In English yes. <laughs> yeah, because that's the only language they can use. I mean, you have no language in common here. I know, yes. So, but English. So, yeah, that's the only thing.